All right, good afternoon, brothers and sisters. And so um, on behalf of the Officers Report Committee, um, I'd like to uh, present to you, I guess, the, um, the Officers Report, uh, which is, it's in your delegate kit, and it's a number of the highlights of the activities that the Federation has undertaken in the past two years since the last convention. And uh, the committee recommends that, uh, after I present some of the highlights, that um, we adopt this report. So, um, so with that, it won't take too long. So um, just a number of the things. Um, we had some recently really good news, as you've heard, um, with the uh, ship start here announcement. And uh, this represented a huge, um, I guess, undertaking and collaboration between so many diverse organizations. Um, and it was a huge success. And it could serve as an important model for a lot of future endeavors. Um, another highlight, taking action on poverty. Um, and in October 2010, a conference was held in Truro that the Federation was in on the planning of. And, um, and uh, this, I guess, resulted in a lot of learning and sharing and suggestions on how to reduce poverty for the benefit of all Nova Scotians. Um, and I guess I hardly have to repeat um, what happened here yesterday. But with Occupy Nova Scotia, this is um, an ongoing thing that I, as you all know, the uh, Federation and its affiliates have really stepped up its support in, so that's really great. Um, as well, there's a lot of um, support that the Federation engaged in um, for workers facing tough times in different sectors, um, one of those being um, for the Public Service Alliance of Canada, CEIU Local 8021-7. Um, with the job losses in the Glace Bay and Sydney area to the tune of 102 positions being lost, which is a huge impact in the CBRM area, as well with uh, support for the communication, energy, and paper workers, Local 972, with the threat of the closure of the new Page Mill. Um, President Clark was called upon to make numerous, numerous trips to Port Hawkesbury to meet with local politicians, union officials, the Premier, and others. Um, there was also support for efforts to save the Yarmouth Ferry, where um, the Federation joined the CAW workers from across the province at a rally in their efforts to reverse this decision. Um, as well, um, President Clark is also still a labor representative on the Minimum Wage Advisory Committee, and uh, we finally have achieved, it's still not enough, but $10 minimum wage in Nova Scotia. Um, still a lot of work to be done on this one. The hope is that this will lead to a living wage. But anyway, um, also the 20th anniversary of the West Ray disaster will occur in May 2012. And the Federation has been approached by the West Ray families to work with them to ensure that this date is remembered in a respectful and meaningful way. And um, on the topic of res retirement security, the Federation engaged in a lot of effort to press the federal government to solve the problems with Canada's retirement income system. And um, that will hopefully still continue um, in this next two years as well. Um, and I guess mostly lastly but not least, um, we have a few new affiliates to the Federation. Um, I guess first, CEP Local 5050. Um, brings into the House of Labour here in Nova Scotia 1,100 members, um, workers with the Cape Breton Victoria Regional School Board. So uh, that's really awesome. <laughs> um, we also have QP Local 4459, uh, which brings nine members employed with the Tierman Society for Abused Women. And also uh, my union. Uh, CP Local 2040, the Canadian Freelance Union, um, it's a nationwide local, but we have 14 members in Nova Scotia. There might be more as it's uh, a membership drive month. <laughs> um, as well, there are many numerous uh, reports from the various committees of the Federation, which you'll find in your delegate binder. Um, the Anti-Racism Human Rights Committee, Political Action Committee, Education Committee, the Occupational Health and Safety and Workers' Compensation Committee, the Pension Committee, Women's Committee, and 
um, the youth committee as well. Um, and these committees are doing a lot of work as a part of the Nova Scotia Federation of Labor's um, work that it does. And so that is all in your delegate kit for your perusal. And so with that, I believe now I um, would like to move that this convention adopt this officer's report and the committee reports. We have a motion to adopt the uh, officer's report and committee reports. Seconder? Properly moved and seconded. Anyone on the question? Microphone three. <coughs> yes, Larry Wark, uh, executive and president of the NSFUR. I, I want to talk about the uh, pension committee report. In the report, uh, I say thank you, but I think it takes a little more than a few words on a piece of paper in case you miss it. Uh, Corinne Carey and Ian Johnson and Leanne McMillan uh, have done tremendous amount of work on behalf of the labor movement in dealing with the modifications to the Pension Act as well as the regulations uh, governing uh, pensions in Nova Scotia. It's complex, it's difficult. Uh, the Pension Committee, I mean, obviously, uh, the, the, the members uh, highly respect uh, the advice and the effort that's put in, uh, Leanne being from CUPE and Corinne and Ian being from the NSGEU. So I, I want to just say, uh, I know they're not here, but uh, someone take it back to them, but I, I want to thank them because uh, the Pension Committee report and the efforts, which are ongoing, by the way. I mean, these stakeholder meetings are ongoing. We haven't settled anything with respect to uh, pension uh, uh, amendments to the regulations in the province, and especially the law. Part of my report will tell you that we are asking the government, not that we want to write the freaking legislation, <laughs> but we should have an opportunity to see it. And if we can give any advice prior to you bringing it to the legislature for uh, uh, passage there and law amendments and all the rest, but give the advice beforehand rather than debating it after the fact. You, uh, I think anybody who's been around this union for a long time, you know what happens when it's after the fact with the government. Too bad. It's just too much work to change anything, I guess, so they don't change. So uh, that's the only thing that's hanging out on that. The other, while I'm here, is uh, in there there's a report uh, that I made on behalf of the NSFUR. And I just want to say that to build a viable retirees organization in the labor movement requires the assistance of the locals today. I mean, I realize this is an extremely youthful group and nobody in this room is going to retire for the next 30 years or so, but on your way to trying to get there, uh, those of us who are retired would like to let you know that we need the assistance of the locals to build this. If you take a look inside of that report, I lay out the eight regional areas which uh, 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 coincide with the Labor Council's areas where a vice chair comes out of. And what we really need to do is to make it active and effective. You can't have a central body like the NSFUR, because, uh, I mean, if I live in Amherst, I'm not coming to Halifax for an hour meeting. The gas would cost me 40 billion bucks, never mind uh, the, the debate or the worthiness of it. So we need it to get it out there in the regions and create this. Now, you'll look, there's names of each person in each region who is the vice chair, that you can make the initial contact. What we really need, though, is the seed money and support of the local unions to get it started. I mean, the dues are $1 a month. Now, come on, you give me 100 people. I mean, one trip to Timmy Hortons with a group and a couple of Timbits and the 100 bucks gone. So you're not making money by charging union dues to retirees because you're, you're only, it's 12 bucks a year. It really requires then that the locals understand and help and support, and then when people are getting ready to retire, at least you can point them in a direction. I mean, I've listened to all these wonderful discussions we've had this week about the campaigns, the fight, and, and one of the greatest resources we have are a lot of our former retired members, and we never call upon them to do anything. And why? Because we don't know where to Jesus they live. They're hired. I think when we retire, we poof. We disappear sometimes, right? Because you go to find these people that don't exist. Yes, they do. Locals know when people are getting ready to go. You can at least give that member the advice. Point them in the direction of us. Let us know that they've retired. We'll make the contact on your behalf. But if we don't have seed money and funding in those regions around the province, so you can create your local council who then affiliates to the NSFUR, affiliates to Kirk, and that's the cheap way to do it, uh, that requires assistance from the locals. So what I'm going to be asking the locals is at some point in time, people are going to be calling various local presidents and whatnot, and talk to them about trying to get something started in their region. 
and the seed money, and we'll go around and talk, and, uh, and you know, we're not talking millions of bucks here, no. Uh, I think the CAW, uh, we did not have any local, now, uh, I'll use my own union as an example. The CAW uh, Retirees Council, what we called it, is a very large geographical area, because there was no single local that had enough retired people to even have your own chapter. Right, and we have that. So, so we created this council. But the key to us surviving is not because I got 30 CAW members who give me 12 bucks a year. It's because the locals are giving us every year 200 bucks, 100 bucks. That's it for the year. Some of the bigger locals, such as the Marine Workers Local, not give you 500 bucks a year. That's your seed money. You got to make it work, and that gives us the ability to go out and campaign, find our own retirees, and try to get them involved. But I think that in the future there are going to be issues that face us political issues, important issues, uh, where I would uh, like to be able to call upon a retirees organization that has sympathy and understanding towards our cause. If you, right? And that's going to be the NSFUR. But to, to get there and to have it work for us, uh, brothers and sisters, we have to help create it. Uh, and then, and hopefully in a number of years, a lot of people, if they retire, will become active in it. And then I can really retire, and somebody else can be the president of the NSFUR. But to get it off the ground, we absolutely need the people in this room to go back to their respective locals and help us get the seed money to get it going. Thank you very much. Thank you, brother. <laughs> Microphone one. Uh, Margaret, Margaret Ann McHugh, uh, Halifax, Dartmouth and District Labor Council, Q, or CEP uh, Local 165. Um, it's really, I think, a point of information. Um, at the last convention in 2009, there was a um, resolution passed to set up a, um, an international solidarity committee, and I just wondered what happened with that. It doesn't seem to have ever sort of been created. I'm not sure if a committee could answer that question, but I wonder if um, one of the officers uh, knows or... Um I'm not... I think we sent out for that... I'm not sure, but uh, yeah, well, no, for, for names. We had trouble with a lot of committees, and, but uh, we will be, again, full, uh, going out for that, for the International Committee. Uh, we've worked with the Congress. I, I honestly can't remember if they were included at that list or not, but they should have been. So, okay, so then the, obviously an oversight on it because we are committed to and we do work with the Congress on the international issue, so thank you. With apologies to the convention. Microphone two. Thanks, Rick. Danny Cavanaugh with CUPE and a member of the Fed Executive. I guess this is a bit of a point of privilege, maybe, but um, for anybody that doesn't know, I'm running it within our own organization to be our next National Secretary of Treasury. Our national convention starts next week, and I won't be here tomorrow because I've got to be in Vancouver for our National Executive Board meetings on Thursday and Friday. But what I wanted to do was say, you know, I was a liaison with the Education Committee to thank, first of all, the Education Committee. We uh, met a couple times, put a lot of good work forward, the reports in the kits. I hope everybody reads it. But I also wanted to take a minute and thank, first, the executive for the great work that happened all year long, um, our QP delegates that we have here, and all you, the other delegates from other organizations. You deserve a lot of credit for everything that goes on every day in every corner of this province when we stand up and we take on employers, you know, when we do all those kinds of things that we do every day. And we need to, one thing I've tried to do since I've been president of CUPE Nova Scotia was always remember to try to say and remember to thank people for the work they do, no matter how small it might be or no matter how large it might be. You know. Um, Somebody said it here, but I say it all the time to people. When you're in this kind of work, it's not every day that my phone rings and somebody says, you know what, Danny, thanks for doing that. Right? Like, I lost my job. What are you going to do? <laughs> you know? so, but you know, we need to give each other credit where credit's due. We need to say thanks. And I, and I say this everywhere I go, uh, go, and I said it the other day. I really want to make sure that everybody connects with this executive and the work that we do with other unions in this province, and I'm telling you right now, it's second to none. There's no relationship in any other province through the Federation of Labor and the other unions in the other provinces that's like the coalition, the partnerships, and the camaraderie we have with all the other unions through the Fed executive. So thanks, everybody, for that, and let's keep up the struggle and keep up the great work. 
By the way, I should mention, so I'm going to leave now because I want to get over to Occupy Nova Scotia. So I got a flight early in the morning and I can only string myself so far, but I really want to get over there and, and see what that's all about because I haven't had the chance to visit there yet. So thank, thank you, brother, and good luck at the convention. Okay, the committee's recommendation is one of concurrence. So you know one else at the mics. Are you ready for the question? question? Question called. All those in favor, please signify. Contrary mind it. Motion carried. Uh, I've got a couple announcements, and I have another point. So I'd ask uh, Brother, Brother McNamara.